हेलो डॉक्टर्स वेलकम टू द सीरीज ऑफ ऑस्टियोलॉजी ऑफ द अपर लैम्प इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द ऑस्टियोलॉजी ऑफ द अपर लैम्प फर्स्ट वी विल ओवरव्यू द अपर लैम्प स्टूडेंट्स अपर लैम्प इज एपेंडिकुलर स्केलेटन and the bones in the upper limbs are clavicle scapula humerus bone radius ulna कार्पल बोन्स मेटाकार्पल एंड फेलेंजेस द क्लेविकल एंड स्केपुला फॉर्म द शोल्डर रीजन ऑफ द अपर आर्म द ह्यूमरस form the arm region of the upper limb while the radius and the ulna bone form the forearm region of the upper limb the carpal bones form the rest region or the rest joint while the metacarpal and the phalanges bones form the hand region so in this series of the osteology of the upper limb first we will discuss the osteology of the scapula students scapula is present on the dorsal surface of body or thoracic cage between the second to seventh rib this is flat and triangular bone we will see in the skeleton diagram this is the anterior view as we have said that the scapula is present on the dorsal surface so this is the dorsal surface of the body or thoracic cage as we have said the scapula is flat and triangular bone and it is present between the second and the seventh rib this is the second rib second third fourth fifth sixth and seventh rib we will isolate the scapula bone this is the scapula bone this is flat bone and triangular in shape now moving toward the major defining features of the scapula bone so the major defining features of the scapula bones are that scapula bone has three borders three angles three processes and three fossas and in last we will discuss the two surfaces i.e. dorsal and ventral surfaces 
but before that we will study the articulation of the scapula bone the scapula bone articulate laterally with the clavicle bone and also with the humerus bone at the glenoid cavity and it articulate with the clavicle bone at the acromion process we will discuss these uh, prominent features later in this video now moving, moving back toward the major defining features first we will discuss the three borders of the scapula bone as i have said that the scapula has three borders so you can see this is the scapula and this is the medial border this is the lateral border and this upward or superior border is the superior border the medial border is very thin while the lateral border is thick and rough in shape the superior border has a notch which is called scapular notch here this notch here in the superior border is called scapular notch in the scapular notch there is a ligament which is called superior transverse scapular ligament here in this region we have a ligament which is called superior transverse scapular ligament the suprascapular artery and vein passes here the suprascapular artery passes above the ligament while the suprascapular nerve passes below the ligament consider this is as superior border this is the scapular notch and this is the superior transverse scapular ligament this is the scapular notch now the suprascapular artery the suprascapular artery passes above the ligament while the suprascapular nerve passes below the ligament this is the supra scapular artery while this is the supra scapular nerve you can also learn this by the mnemonic that the army that the army crosses the bridge above while the navy crosses the bridge below now moving toward the angles of the scapula so this superior portion has this angle here in the superior region is called superior angle which is formed by the superior border and the medial border while this angle located in fear in the inferior region is called inferior angle and this is formed by the medial border and the lateral border while this angle located in the lateral region is called lateral angle and this is formed by the superior border and the lateral border so these are the three angles of the scapula this these are the three borders superior border medial border and the lateral border this is the superior angle and this is the inferior angle and this is the lateral angle it is so simple now moving toward the another defining feature which is the processes 
so first we have spine which is located on the dorsal side of or the dorsal surface of the scapula the spine is a large triangular ridge that originate from medial and move toward the lateral this here this ridge is called spine the upper border of this spine here this this upper border is called upper lip while this lower border is called lower lip of the spine so this is the first process now this spine process extend laterally and uh, form another process which is called acromion process here this area is called acromion process and this acromion process further take part in the articulation with the clavicle bone now the so this is the first process and this is the second process the third process is located on the ventral surface this is the ventral surface this process here this is called keracoid process and this process provide attachment for the ligaments and tendons so these are the three processes two are located on the dorsal surface while one is located on the ventral surface which is keracoid process this is the keracoid process now students in last we will uh, so so we have three fossas remaining so as we have discussed this process this is called spine so the fossa formed above the spine is called supraspinatus fossa while the uh, fossa formed below the spine is called infraspinatus fossa now moving toward the ventral surface the ventral surface is overall in concave shape and have a rough ridges fossa formed this fossa is called the subscapularis fossa so we have three fossas one is on the ventral surface subscapularis fossa and two on the uh, posterior side or the dorsal surface supraspinatus and the infraspinatus now moving toward the last point the two surfaces of the ventricles so we have covered the major portion of the scapula so first we will discuss the dorsal surface now the dorsal surface as we have discussed it has supraspinatus um, fossa infraspinatus fossa the spine the acromion process so these all are the structures on the dorsal surface while on the ventral surface we have a uh, single fossa which is called subscapularis fossa this whole area is called subscapular subscapular fossa and this process here this is called keracoid process and on the lateral aspect we have a cavity which is called glenoid cavity here this is called glenoid cavity this glenoid cavity form articulation with the head of the humerus and form the glenohumeral joint this form the glenohumeral joint while the acromion process here it form the acromoclavicular joint this form articulation with the acromion end of the clavicle bone students now moving toward the clavicle bone so the clavicle bone is medially articulating with the sternum bone and laterally articulating with the scapula the clavicle bone is also called collar bone it is s shape bone from the frontal view the the medial two third here the medial two third is convex 
shape while the lateral one third is concave shape as you can see here this is the frontal view so the medial here from here to here this is the medial two third portion and this is in concave shape while the lateral one third it is in the concave shape as you can see this is the medial two third convex shape and this is the lateral one third concave shape so moving toward the extremities of the clavicle bone the extremities are the ends so clavicle bone has two extremities the one the one that medially articulate with the sternum bone so this will call the sternal extremity and the one that articulate with the acromion process of the scapula this is called the acromial extremity now moving toward the skeleton diagram this this here this region that articulate with the sternum bone so this is called the sternal extremity while this portion that articulate with the acromion process is called the acromial extremity no student as you can see that the sternal extremity is blunt shape and thick while the acromial extremity is flat and thin shape the sternal extremity here this facet is called sternal facet as it faces the sternum bone and this is the medial two third convex frontal view and this is the uh, lateral one third concave shape the sternal extremity form articulation with the sternum bone while the acromial extremity form articulation with the acromial acromial process of the scapula